Hello all, Old Geek, and uh, this is my second video looking through the uh, the One Ring Starter Set rulebook, where hopefully I'll be learning the rules and talking through them so that I can actually remember what they do, and uh, you can learn along with me, and maybe we can have a game together at some point. Right, um, last video. I went through the prologue and the very basics of action, resolution and target numbers. So if you've not seen that video then that's the one to look at first. Um, it's, they're going to be a slow paced videos. So I'm not going to hurry these, I'm going to take my time so we can digest things together. Right, last time um, I did, I remember I, I touched on the topic of degrees of success and I mentioned how I like to use degrees of success in games sometimes when they have a very binary success or fail uh, mechanic I often sort of narrate in a degree of success or a degree of failure based on how much they succeed by or how much they fail by because um, I think that makes things a little more interesting and first thing on the next page the rule book goes into degrees of success. So let's take a look at uh, degrees of success. A roll result that achieves its target number or resulted in the the Gandalf rune. Yeah, I'm just going to remind you of these. That, that I did see in the last video this all appears rather small because my little video thing is going to be small in the top corner. So I'm going to hold that a little bit closer. Hopefully it will zoom in. The Gandalf rune is a success rune and produces one or more of, the, of these icons. Okay, look next to the six, and hopefully you can see it. There's a little icon next to the six. If you're using normal dice, it's simply a roll of a six on, on a d6, just as the runes on that are just rolls of 11 or 12 on, the, on a d12. So you don't have to use these posh dice, but they are nice. Right, so, and produces one or more of the uh, success icons, the sixes, is an outcome of superior quality. A musician performs particularly well. A lookout spots enemies at a longer distance. An orator succeeds in galvanizing a larger audience. The greater the number of success icons rolled, the better. So, for example, if you're rolling to achieve your target number with these and you roll two d6s and get two sixes then things are going to be quite memorable that does not mean it'll allow your acrobatic elven rogue type to leap up and touch touch the touch the top of a 30 foot high tree because that's impossible it gives you some good examples of improved successes there, look, a musician performs particularly well. A lookout spots enemies at a longer distance. An orator succeeds in galvanizing a larger audience. Your elf who jumps um, at a tree to evade pursuing orcs. A standard success might be that they grab onto the lowest, the lowest branch and the orcs are now beneath them about five or six feet below if you roll the if you are one success you might jump and grab the branch and swing and pull yourself up to the branch so you're now stood on the branch a an extreme success could be you jump and grab the branch and you swing and the orcs continue past and you might swing down and drop behind them if that's what the sort of thing you're trying to achieve these are all things that are believable within the environment and okay so jumping up and swinging on a branch and coming down behind them they, that's that's fairly spectacular but it's not impossible not utterly implausible it's just unlikely but Achieving a success and rolling double sixes or treble sixes or whatever on these, that is an unlikely event anyway. So 
that's fine. We are playing a fantasy game, and you are allowed to do things that are exceptional, but not things that are impossible. Okay, we move on to uh, modifiers. Right, Fol following a number of variations upon the core rules of the game, they represent those advantages and drawbacks that affect the player heroes as the most explicit demonstration of their ability as heroes. So, favoured roles. The character, each character class, which character, I'm not sure whether it's a class or the race, I haven't made a character yet, but um, characters have skills that they are favoured in. Probably granted by race, but I'm not sure. Um, so, if you are favoured, you get to roll 2d12 instead of 1, and you keep the best. It's like the advantage mechanic in 5e. So you're not adding them together, you're just keeping the best out of two. You can still roll um, very well or very badly. Um, you could roll a couple of ones or you could have a, you know, a double eye of Sauron or something like that. that it can still happen, but you it's something you're naturally good at. Typical sources of favoured roles are a player hero's favoured skills. There we go. But also, I'm guessing if Going back to that tree, um, you might, for example, give, if, if the elf has fallen down behind the orcs because of that really great success on the attempt at jumping up and grabbing on the branch, then I could imagine the, the referee of the game, the lawmaster of the game, saying, okay, when you want to attack next round, you are favoured because you have you are now behind them and they are surprised at what you've done. So yes, a good lawmaster, a good DM of any game, will will take these sort of things into account. Ill favoured roll, that's disadvantage in five A terms. You roll two of those and you keep the lower. So two D twelve keep the lower. It's nice and straightforward. Nice and straightforward. Bonus success dice. It's possible for a player hero to be attempting something under favourable circumstances or employing a particularly beneficial talent. Okay, it's another way of doing this. So you don't, you don't just have the favoured rolls on the D12s. You can also have bonus success dice using the D6s. Nice and flexible. It's a really, it, it's a, it comes across as a really, really flexible system. You do whatever suits you in the circumstance. And here we have, uh, it's possible to be for a role to be both favoured and ill-favoured for conflicting reasons. So you, if you're favoured and ill-favoured, they wipe each other out. Ill-favoured player heroes, um, adversaries, um, might make a player hero ill-favoured. Okay, um, facing something that is particularly frightening. Facing down the ring wraiths, for example. <laughs> you might be ill-favoured on any sort of attempts to attack them unless you can come o overcome that source of fear. Um, or, say for example, you go into the Prancing Pony and a load of Dwarfs are having a big old sing song, and you go in there and you're all grumpy and you tell them to shut up, and then you try and start talking to them. <laughs> okay, how how well are they going to react to you after being interrupted and told to shut up? They're not, so you are now ill favoured. Okay, hope bonus. A character's hope score is a pool of points representing the reserve of spiritual vigour that heroes draw from when confronted by difficult odds. So, you, you, yeah, you've got a hope score, which you can add extra success dice with. So that's the player um, choosing when to draw on their hope. Inspiration, inspired. 
it's all oh right so this is a little different a player hero becoming temporarily inspired you get double the benefit of spending a hope point so you don't double the result of the dice you roll extra dice okay good good penalty success dice bonuses for okay player heroes wish they were lucky enough to enjoy only favorable circumstances at times, fortune seems to conspire against them. They may put themselves in danger by their own volition, looking for greater benefit, or they may have fallen victim to some malicious power or spell. When this happens, a player hero may suffer from a penalty, um, which means you roll fewer success dice, down to a minimum of, of zero. Right, conditions. Two special conditions that can affect the player heroes. Weary. Now this is something I do remember from our game that we played a couple of years back. I like this. If your endurance score, you, you have a um, a load score, which is basically what you're carrying, is your encumbrance. If your endurance, if you take wounds or you're tired or whatever and your endurance drops to below your load score, then you become weary. Um, and here, this, this table here, weariness affects the success dice. If you roll a one, two, or three on the success dice, they count as a zero. That's harsh. That is harsh. It's also very nice. I like that. It's good. Um, and they can, of course, drop their backpack, um, put down the weight they're carrying in order to get rid of the effects of weariness. So if you think back to the uh, Lord of the Ring film, Lord of the Rings films, um, Sam is clearly a character with a high endurance. Mr. Frodo, let me take the weight off you. That sort of thing. He's And he's got a lot of hope. Right. Let's have a look at the others. Wounded. Serious injuries can cause a hero to become wounded. While losing and recovering endurance is a everyday occurrence, being wounded is a more serious predicament for an adventurer and will affect them for much longer. Wounded heroes who remain active risk being knocked out of combat and recover lost endurance points more slowly. Okay. Um, I do wish they'd put how you become wounded here, unless it is simply taking a wound during fight. It's not, is, it, is it a level of endurance? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. So, here we have a detailed breakdown of the rolling procedure. Define what the player hero is trying to achieve with the role. Select the ability to be used for the role. Players are encouraged to suggest the appropriate ability. A law master can correct them, but work with your players. Take one d12 and a number of success dice equal to the rating of the chosen ability. Um, and then you can choose to spend hope or not, or, or look at see whether you're inspired or favoured or ill-favoured and modify the number of dice. Gain or lose dice according to any bonuses or penalties that apply to the roll. Make the roll. If you're favoured, you choose the best result on the feet dice. Or the worst if you're ill-favoured. If you've got the auto-success or the, the, the zero result, or you just add them all up. And if it's successful, the number of sixes you get on these indicates the degree of success. One thing I like about that, one thing I really like about that, if you are unskilled, you can still be successful if you roll the Gandalf rune on the d12. But, but, your degree of success is limited to just a regular success. It's not going to be anything special. So if you're unskilled, you've 
uh, struggle to succeed and you'll ju might, you'll just get there if you succeed but you won't achieve anything beyond that that's that's fine that's absolutely fine right um the next video is going to come into going to say talk about uh, characteristics attributes and all that sort of stuff um and we're going to do a bit of sort of character creation perhaps and skills we shall see we shall see but uh i think that's enough for this video so these first two videos pretty much together as a package the first one talked about the target numbers the second one how those how the numbers of dice you use are adjusted by circumstances hope you're enjoying these i am it's teaching me i'm the old geek i'll see you in the next one So let's see what it says.